should we highlight uh, were too little too late. Eventually, the country was not ready to face a full-blown invasion by Nazi Germany that uh, launched an aggression against the Soviet Union on in the early hours on the 22nd of June 1941. We were able to stop the, uh, the enemy. The attempt to appease the aggressor at the war was a grave mistake and it cost us a lot. We lost strategic territories and millions of people in the early months. We will not make such a mistake, such a blunder for a second time. We have no right to do it. Those who lay claims to world hegemony without any grounds call us Russia, the enemy, the adversary, and they do have huge financial, scientific, military clout. We are aware of this. When we objectively assess the threats against us in the economy, and we also assess of our abilities and capabilities to withstand that blackmail, that sheer and ruthless blackmail. We are pretty realistic about those assessments. As for the military, even following the collapse of the Soviet Union and the loss of a lot of capacity, Russia is one of the most powerful nuclear countries around the world. And it has certain advantages in terms of some new innovative weapons. And in this regard, no one should have any doubts that any direct attack against Russia would be to uh, any um, dangerous circumstances for any potential aggressor and to their defeat. Defend. Military technology is evolving very fast. Now, if we allow any deployment of military systems uh, uh, near our borders, well, these systems will stay there for decades and they will create an absolutely unacceptable threat. As NATO is moving to the east, the security for Russia is getting more and more dangerous. And NATO has been saying that they need to bring this infrastructure to Russia as fast as possible. So they've been uh, toughening up their talk. We can't just sit idly by. It would be completely irresponsible for us. Further deployments of uh, NATO infrastructure and uh, the deployment of weapons in Ukraine is unacceptable. Definitely NATO is just a tool in foreign policy of the US. On our historic lands, we have anti-Russian systems, anti-Russian forces. They receive NATO military weapons, the latest cutting-edge weapons. And the US and its allies are pursuing containment policy for Russia. And for us, it's an existential threat. Dial live. It's about a destiny of us as a nation. It's no exaggeration. It's a real threat to our interests and to our very existence, to our sovereignty, the existence of our state. That's the red line that I've mentioned earlier very often. And they've crossed that line in this regard. Now on the Donbass, what we're seeing is that the forces that uh, led a coup d'etat in 2014 captured power and they've been preserving it through some declarative procedures. They don't want to have, see any peaceful resolution in Donbass. For eight years, long eight years, we've done everything to address the situation through peaceful political forces. It's all been in vain. Now, as I said in my previous address, we cannot just sit idly by and watch the tragedy unfolding. We cannot just be patient. We had to stop 
that nightmare genocide against millions of people who pinned their hopes entirely on Russia, on us. These aspirations, the pain of the people who have been the key motive behind the decision to recognize the People's Republics and the Donbass. Oh, what should we highlight? Leading NATO countries have supported extreme nationalists and neo-Nazi pursuing their goals. And those forces in Ukraine will never forgive Crimeans for their free choice and they will push for Crimea and just like they did in the Donbass, they will push for a war there. Just like the Hitlerites bands in Ukraine killed local people in World War II and they also lay claims to some other Russian territories. The intelligence we receive is that a, cla a clash against these Nazi forces is inevitable. It's just a matter of time. They are biding their time. And now they're also saying they want nuclear power. They want nuclear weapons. We will not let them do it. As I said, Russia accepted new geopolitical realities following the collapse of the Soviet Union. We will respect any new nations in the uh, post-Soviet uh, territory. We will respect their territory, and we do respect it. And one of the examples is the assistance uh, we extended to Kazakhstan that faced a tragic situation and a th challenge to its territorial sovereignty integrity and sovereignty. Russia cannot exist having a permanent threat coming from modern Ukraine. We all remember that in the noughties, 2005, we put up resistance to terrorists in the Caucasus. We preserved Russia. In 2014, we supported Crimea, people of Crimea and the Sevastopol in 2017. We put up a shield against the terrorists from Syria. We have no other choice. We have no other choice to defend ourselves. The same is happening right now. We simply no have a, we simply don't have any other choice to protect our people and we'll have to use the only available choice that we will use today. The circumstances require immediate, resolute action. People's Republics of the Donbass have requested assistance from Russia. In this regard, in line with Article 51.7 of the UN Charter, with the authorization of the Parliament of Russia and in exercising the Treaty on Friendship and Mutual Assistance with the Donetsk People's Republics and the Lugansk People's Republics, I have taken the decision to conduct a special military operation. Its purpose is to protect people who have been subject to abuse and genocide by the Kyiv regime for eight years. And to do this, we will strive to demilitarize and denazify Ukraine. And also, to justice, those who have committed numerous bloody crimes against civilians, including citizens of the Russian Federation. We don't have any plans to occupy Ukrainian territories. We don't want to force anyone, anything on anyone. But we've heard claims in the West that the documents signed by the Soviet totalitarian regime about the outcomes of World War II should not be actually implemented. Well, what can I say to that? The outcomes of World War II, just like the tragedy and the losses and casualties uh, by the Soviet Union, is a sacred thing. And it doesn't run counter to the sacred rights, human rights, uh, based on the realities that we have. Again, We've been listening here to President Putin as he addresses the Russian people about the emergency of the situation in Donbass. Uh, and he has made his points very clear that the NATO has crossed the red line 
the red line he has set uh, moving in troops he's always said if you believe there's going to be a war strike first he has uh, held true to his pledge to strike first there um, so anyway we'll catch just this last part here and in short I hope that you will support this decision we love our homeland and that means that we are powerful that's the final words of the president of Russia. Uh, I don't know if there's anything else. Don't know if there's anything else on there. So we'll just kind of leave it at that right now. Uh, we've already reported our first news broadcast on things here. Um, and we are looking to see anything else that may be going on. Seems that now that the day, daytime has begun in Ukraine, things have quietened down. Uh, so I'm not sure exactly how much of the objective Russia has reached in their first part um, of this war there. So we will have to wait to see how this goes. Um, uh, the Ukrainian ministry is reporting hundreds of, hundreds of cas casualties and every single city is under attack. Innocent people are being killed by war criminals. Well, I'll go... Lopman, a Ukrainian, reporting that right there. Um, so we will be hearing from both sides and what they think. Colonel McGregor Biden refused to acknowledge what's important to Putin. Now he has to watch the invasion. On Fox News, U.S. Army Colonel Douglas uh, McGregor uh, said that to Tucker Carlson on the broadcast tonight there. So uh, we'll catch that just here briefly here so we can catch any of that broadcast there, what was said there. Just here. My name is Douglas. I'm a writer, director, and I'm. So, um, but at any rate, yes. So that that invasion is on. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live.